Um, I like prophecy. I love prophecy, so um, thought I would do a video on, on more on prophecy and prophecy that points to Jesus. <laughs> I love this prophecy especially. Um, this uh, prophecy is um, one of my favorites. It's about shows Jesus is not only the savior, but also shows Jesus uh, as the Messiah who secretly is revealing himself to Israel. Um, yeah. Well, uh, it's it's to do with um, Noah, Noah in the Ark and Noah's Ark. So, um, <laughs> I'm not going to read the entire Noah's Ark passage, chapter six, because it's uh, it's a big passage. But the prophecy is found in the story of Noah's Ark. Genesis chapter 6, starting at verse 5. Um, basically, um, uh, God says the wickedness on the earth was real great, so asked him to um, build a ark. Um, make uh, make him build this ark. Um because God says, I'm going to myself bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy under heaven all flesh that is in which the breath of life um, is there. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Okay, so that was why. Um, he says, I'll establish my covenant with you and you should go into the ark, your sons, your wife and your sons' wives and every, th every living thing of flesh you shall be. Uh, you shall bring uh, two of into the ark to keep them alive. Uh, male and female. Uh, and basically there was seven of some kinds. There was two of two of some kinds and seven of other kinds. Okay. Uh, so he goes on, goes on, goes on. And there's lots and lots of passages uh, about the thing. Um, I'm going to skip right down to um, in verse 11. Where he talks about where he says um, the windows of the heavens when it flooded, it says the windows of heaven were opened. Now that's kind of um, an important key phrase there, or key point. Okay, um, the rain was on the. Uh, it, it rained for forty days and forty nights after that. Um, after the windows of the heavens had opened. Um, in verse 17 it says, The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. Okay, there's uh, interesting there. Um, jumping down to chapter 8, verse 1. Um, it says, And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters subsidi uh, subsided. Okay, and then later on, he sent out a dove, uh, and the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and returned to the ark. And then later in verse 10, chapter 8 verse 10, he sent out, uh, another seven days later, he sent out another dove from the ark, but the, and the dove came back in the evening, and behold, a... Um, freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth so I guess it was a female dove okay so the dove sent out that's a bit it's a massively long paragraph um, and yeah and it right at the end God says this is the sign of the covenant which I'll make between me and you every living thing that is with you for perpetual generations. I will set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. Okay, so he says, basically he said this covenant, then I'm not going to flood the world again and do that again. So there's, uh, I mean, I'm very briefly going over the ark, um, he had to build an ark, put animals on it, and then the waters rose, and then he had to check when the waters, whether the water's going down or not. Okay, so Moa, uh, 
Noah. Noah. Okay. And so I'll summarize. Noah's asked to preach the pre flood world. Um, and the message was that they were going to perish if they did not stop their wickedness and come aboard the ark before the world was to be flooded. This parallels the message of the gospel uh, to repent and be saved from the coming, coming judgments of the world. The ark, you've got to think about this. The ark was the only way that people could be saved, just like Jesus is the only way people can be saved now. The people had to believe the message that was preached, um, which is the same for today. You must have faith to be saved. So there was a message that was preached and they had to do something about it, otherwise they weren't saved. Uh, the hidden part of the story uh, shows that it is a prophecy pointing to Jesus um, when Noah gets a dove to see if the waters had receded from the earth yet. The dove is the first is first seen out and comes back because there is no other resting place on the earth. And then the next time it's seen out, it comes back with an olive branch in its mouth. Uh, when you compare this event and the baptism of Jesus in the New Testament, you can actually see some quite interesting and amazing parallels, I think. Um, in Matthew 3 verse 13, uh, Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to permit him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you're coming to me. But Jesus answered and said, Permit it to be so for now, for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Uh, then he allowed him. Uh, Jesus said, He come out of the water, from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. There's the heavens opening again. Um just like the heavens were opened in Noah's time to flood the world. But this time he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Firstly, some important points that are very, very easy to miss. John the Baptist was preaching a message to repent. Um, Matthew 3 verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He is warning of a wrath that was coming and of a person who would baptize people not with water but the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, For us to fulfill, he wanted to be baptized to fulfill something. This is clearly a reference to a prophetic writing. Um, when Jesus is baptized and comes out of the water, it says the Holy Spirit descended upon him, or descended upon him in a bodily form of a dove. Luke three verse twenty-two, bodily form of a dove. Why did the Holy Spirit use this form when coming upon Jesus? Because he was confirming him as the Ark of God, the only true resting place. And the only place of salvation on the earth. And also clearly showing he had just anointed Jesus. Jesus was said to, this was a sign that was fulfilled in Luke 4 verse 14. Uh, he says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding area and region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his custom was, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Um, and then he goes on, and on, goes on and on, and then he says, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Uh, this importance of the Holy Spirit coming upon him as a dove is more clearly seen when you understand that the anointing oil is made from the olive tree. So a prophetic picture is seen when you see the dove from Noah's ark bringing an olive branch to the ark and the Holy Spirit doing the same thing. Remember the word Messiah means to be anointed, which was done with the olive oil. 
Um, yeah, so the dove bring the olive branch, the Holy Spirit anointing Jesus as the dove. Again, clear symbols that he is the Messiah. There are a few more textual clues that show this is a prophetic story pointing to Jesus. One clear one is that both passages say the heavens were open. This links the two passages together. Jesus is the only resting place and salvation. Hebrews 9 verse 28, um, verse chapter 4 verse 1 to 10. There's an obvious, obvious link in the events that they both took place in water. Jesus coming up out of the water. This is the same as Noah's Ark rising on the floodwaters. Um, any Israelite that's seeing these events should have seen the prophetic connection. John the Baptist even tells people to be watching for a sign for the Messiah to be revealed. If you read about that, John actually says, uh, says this. This is why he even was baptizing in the first place, as for the sign to reveal the Messiah. What is the sign to reveal Jesus is the Messiah? What was the sign? John says, I came baptizing, uh, John 1 verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me. He was sent before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. So basically, he came baptizing to reveal someone, the Messiah, to Israel. And... Basically, it says, in John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified, this is the Son of God. Um, the floodwaters represent death to the world, and the river Jordan represents death as well, because it runs to the Dead Sea. John was baptizing there because there was a lot of water. But he did comment about God raising up children from these very stones, which was most likely the ones that Israel's uh, people had to bring out of the river. Um, the Jordan crossing. This also becomes a prophetic event that points to Jesus as the Christ and links baptism to the ark and the flood as well. Um... It's very in-depth and complicated, but basically uh, when um, Israel was crossing into the Promised Land, they got 12 stones um, from in the river and um, put them over on the land. And it said them 12 stones were to be a sign among you for when your children ask in time, saying, what do these stones mean? You can explain it. Um, them stones being brought out of the river into the promised land because um, the ark touched the water and it said that when the ark the feet of the priests who carry the ark touched the water uh, the water the river remember the river Jordan that runs to death runs to the Dead Sea it said it was cut off and backed all the way back to Adam a city called Adam so the rivers that run to death are cut off all the way back to Adam it's talking about the sins of mankind being cut off all the way back to Adam. Happened to be the ark being Jesus coming, who would be baptized in them same, same, that same river, who would be the son of God who would die for sins and cut off the sins all the way back to Adam for mankind. Uh, so that's the ark made by Moses and the ark made by Joshua, the ark of the covenant. Um, some really good, um, good uh, ones there. If you want to look at um, the Joshua three thirteen, if you want to see the parallels.